Hi guys, Vince here from CRSO. Welcome back to our channel. And today I'm gonna take you on a short tour of some of the plants that I've been collecting over the past few years. Now, I've been collecting aroids, mostly philodendrons and enterums, for about two years now. And it all started with just a few pot of succulents. And then one by one, my succulent died. I almost wanted to give up gardening, but then I found a new interest in aroids, which is so easy to care for, given the right um, condition and care that you provide for them. So yeah, um, just gonna quickly run through the setup of my balcony. So this is my balcony and where I put all my plants. This is a quick overview. And a lot of the furniture that I'm using here are from IKEA. As you can see, this rack is the... It's actually a bookshelf, but I thought it looked nice over a white wall. So I got the bookshelf initially set up, but then I found out that it's not very uh, durable because when you expose this to water, it rusts and they rust very, very quickly and easily. So not really, I do not recommend you guys use this if you are using to display your plants. But if you have, if you put saucer underneath your pots, it should be fine. But if you expose water, expose the shelf to water all the time, it's gonna rust. And then here's the Heavis rack. This is the galvanized uh, steel rack, which I bought from IKEA as well. This this rack is a lot more durable compared to this one. So yep, get this rack. This is called uh, Lerberg. It only cost $49.90 if I remember correctly. Yep, so that's, I found it's the best rack to put plants. Then um, in the middle, I have a table. Then at the top and the middle is my uh, parasol. This one I got from IKEA as well. This parasol it helps to <clears throat> shade the balcony from the intense afternoon sun. And I found out that it wasn't enough. So just yesterday, only yesterday, I DIY'd some kind of shade, some kind of structure to hold this uh, black orchid shade over this parasol and hopefully that my plants won't get as much sunburn after this. Yeah, so that's it for setup. Uh, now I'll bring you into my balcony and have a look. Now I'll just quickly introduce you to some of my babies that I've collected over the years. So here's my Milano Chrysum. And yeah, this guy recently got sunburned. So just now I chopped off here. The sunburn part. Milano Chrysum. I've got, uh, this one's Epipyrinoides. But just recently, it's been renamed to Escalado. Yeah, Monstera Escalado. This is one of the cuttings that I've propagated. And then right next to Milano is this, um, is, is the Philodendron Maximum. This one is uh, propagated from cutting as well. And these guys, they grow really fast and really huge. Sorry, not fast, but really huge. Uh, they get huge really fast. Like one leaf is bigger than the other. This is a very interesting species to have. Philodendron maximum. Beside it is my Burley Max variated. So this is the, this guy, I grew it from two leaves cutting, which I bought from a collector two years back. And it has 
flourished ever since. It's now grown extremely bushy. I'll show you what I mean. Look, so bushy. And from this mother plant, I've actually propagated about 10 pots already. Some of which I have already sold. Yep. So this is the mother plant of the Berlin Marks. If some of you have bought the plant from me. Uh, as you can see, the variegation is very uh, almost lime green yellow, which is not really appealing. And guys, I, I found the secret to making the variegation look a bit more white. This one is a baby plant I propagated from this mother plant. And this guy is exposed to the afternoon 3 p.m. sun until around 5 or 6. And as you can see, there's a high contrast of coloration between this one and this one. It's from direct sunlight. But I would not advise you guys to try exposing any variegated plants to the sun at the moment because the sun is extremely intense now. But if you have an extra brilliant marks lying around, feel free to try this trick. It's gonna convert, see all this lime green variegated leaf to this nice white creamy color leaf. And I found this by accident because I left this guy here uh, neglected and just a uh, few days ago I found that it was exposed to direct sunlight and beside it is a uh, syngonium elbow variegated which I've grown from a single leaf cutting uh, inside here I have some Thai constellation baby uh, some gigas or gigas Um, then Apropinatum uh, variegated cutting, which I'm propagating. Some variegated ZZ plant. Then Milano Chrysum. So this guy is actually the tip of this guy. And it's not growing anything at the moment. So it's just a single leaf. But the mother plant has popped up some new notes and this is one of the new leaf. Very velvety and shiny. This is a very beautiful species to have but the big size one is quite difficult to get a hold of. And at the bottom I have more Milano Chrysum. This one is also a tip cutting which I'm propagating and I think this is by far the largest, largest leaf that I have. If you want to have a comparison between my hand, that's how large it is. And then this one's a Anturium podophyllum or it could be a hybrid, I'm not too sure. And this is the Glor Philodendron Glorious. That's my mother plant. I've sold two, two pots of Glorious already. And this is the mother plant that has been producing lots of new shoots for me. And this is just the most recent leaf. Okay. At the back, I have some propagation going on. This is a Philodendron Mamei, but it's not very nice, so I'm going to show it. Uh, right next to the Glorious is my Philodendron Plomaniae. Uh, I've got this from Soil and Pots for about two months, and only just recently it has started to stabilize. Finally, I'm seeing new growth. So this guy took me a while to stabilize, but yeah, it's all good now. Philodendron plomaniae. Uh, 
Um, yep. Uh, here I have some philodendron mamiae. Uh, this is a fiber catephylum. I've got a few pots of this. Um, this is a sad looking alopecia silver dragon. <laughs> uh, I have uh, this one's a alopecia pink dragon. Yeah. It's not very pink at the moment. Then above I have this is an Apropinatum variegated, which I've grown from two leaves. And this is one of the few Apropinatum pinatum that I have, which has nice variegation. But the problem with nice variegation, you guys, see this. So yeah. It's a love-hate relationship with nice variegated plants. Here is a Philodendron Domesticum variegated. This guy I grew from a single leaf cutting as well from this guy. So this guy is... I've cut back a lot from the top because it has been producing just pure yellow variegated leaves. I think I have cut it over the top around three times already and finally now it's giving me nice variegated leaves. Yeah, so it takes a lot of trial and error just to make your variegated plants put out nice variegated leaves. So don't give up and just keep cutting and experimenting. So that's Domesticum. Right next to the Domesticum is uh, my Philodendron Rugosum aberrant form. This is a very easy plant and it has a very beautiful glossy leaf. I can just get the right sun here. Yeah. You can see the leaf is almost glowing in the middle. This is a lot more different than the regular rugosum and cheaper and much more easier to get a hold of. So rugosum, aberrant form. Okay. So here I have a Paraisoverdia, I think. That's how you pronounce it, not sure. This is this one actually belonged to a friend of mine. I'm helping him to babysit this. When he passed it to me, it was just a few leaves. Like this size. And it's a little bug here. Not sure what it's doing. Shush. Yep. So it was only just this few leaves when he passed it to me. And it has blossomed ever since. This was one of the nice leaves, but the most recent one is... I think it's almost reverting to full green. Very less spot, you see. So if this happens on the new leaf, I might need to chop it back. So I'm gonna chop here and just make this into a new plant and hopefully the mother plant will cope. We'll put out more nice molted leaves like this. So just that's a quick tip on how you can control variegation in plants. Okay, I'm putting this guy back first. And then here is another Epipinatum variegated. This guy actually belongs to uh, has been booked already by Good Living with Plants. So, uh, bro, if you're watching this, this is your plants, and it's putting out very, very nice, very good leaves. Yeah. So, just drop me a message when you want to pick this up. <laughs> and more apropinatum. 
These guys are so easy to propagate. You just need a single leaf and a note. Um, this one's in. This one's the giant Adansonii, and I got some Florida Beauty at the back. Here I've got a Atta Bapuensi Cross Billy Tie. Some white wizard cutting, which is just about to stabilize. See, that's a new note. Um, more Apripinatum, Apripinum Pinatum cuttings. This one is a Syngolium elbow. Um, here I've got a white princess, which is not white at all. <laughs> the only white leaf is, hang on. It's here. Yeah, that's the only white leaf. Which is kind of sad, but then again, I got this for cheap, so it's all good. Uh, and then this is my wife's Stefania, which she insisted to put here as deco for the video. Um, more white wizard. This one is just about to put out a new leaf as well. It's gonna be a bit of white. Oh man. Okay. And Apoprenatum, Pinatum, very good. It's more of them. So over here it's just racks of random stuff. Like that is a uh, Philodendron Ring of Fire. Apoprenatum and um, Seibu Blue. She's going growing a bit too leggy. Uh, Philodendron bow tie, which got sunburned recently. And then I got uh, Philodendron Bob C. Some more Ring of Fires. Um, this is um, Sira Epipenoides or Escalado. Then uh, here I've got Amigrium Medium Variegated. The back is just a bunch of Tetras Burlimax. Uh, Burlimax Variegated. Ring of Fire. This is another pot of Apropinet. Apropinum Pinatum. Which has just popped up a nice new leaf. At the bottom is this one I have just recently purchased. Apparently, it's not called Philodendron Whole Tone Yadam, it's something else. I'll look it up and put it in the video later. This is my mother plants of uh, Syngonium Elbow. I think this is one of the nice new, nice old leaves. I've got some Philodendron Martiatum. She's not doing too great. Okay, so here it's a bit just some more early marks. All these are grown from cuttings and they have just recently stabilized. And some of the pop new leaves. So this is one of the easy variegated philodendrons that you guys should definitely try out. Uh, here's a it's not say elbow, but there's not I don't think there's any white on it. Um, Philodendron Tortum. Tortum. Uh, some more Syngoniums elbow. Syngoniums Tortum. This is uh, Apoprenoides. That's the mother plant, which I'm actually babysitting for a friend. This doesn't actually belong to me. But one of the perks of having to babysit the plant is you get to take free cuttings. This was grown from that plant early on. And it's growing big ever since. And starting to look a bit more like 
the Aquifern artist. Um, here is my Anturium Pidato, uh, Pidato something. And below it is my big Philodendron Maximum. And it's the only huge leaf. It has gone dormant for all, I'm not sure why. This one's another Philodendron Bob C, which actually belongs to a friend as well. Um, got some Tetraspermas, some Mexicanum, uh, Singonium Elbow, which have gone green. This is Philodendron, Philodendron Quercifolium. Uh, here I've got a Philodendron Paraiso Verde. grow very fast. Alright, so for the day. And here I've got this one's actually or it used to be a Florida beauty, but it has reverted to full green. So I think sh that we should just call this a squammy ferrum, I think. Um some more apoprinum pinatum at the at the lower shelf. Uh, I've got a Philodendron White Knight here. No, sorry, White Wizard. Yeah, which has just given me a nice new variegated leaf. But it's a bit damaged. But what are you gonna do? This one's a Philodendron, Philodendron 696686. Uh, Atabapu and see some Philodendron Chardonnay. Uh, this one's an Anturium Pantophyllum, which I've gotten from a collector, a very nice guy. Uh, the bottom is an Anturium Brownie. These guys grow quick and huge, very fast. So when I got this, it was only just this few leaves. And now it's putting out this ginormous leaves. Anturium brownii. And at the bottom of brownii is um, Philodendron distandi logum. So this one is actually a hybrid Magnificum. I think it was crossed with Crystallinum because the pure Magnificum had, has the square square petal and this guy, this guy's petal is actually a D-shaped petal. So it's not a full square. So that's how you can tell the real Magnificum from the hybrid one. But still, it still looks good nonetheless. And I got it for cheap from a mark chick in Group Kaladi. Yep. And below it is a Monstera Pinati Partita. Which is pop just about to pop out a new leaf right there. And then I have some Philodendron. Jose Bono, um, Anturium Forgetii, uh, some Monstera Thai Constellation, uh, another pot of Philodendron uh, Paraiso Verde. So this pot was actually the mother plant of this guy. This was the tip of this mother plant and I've only chopped it off like a week ago and then this happened so this is a very very fast and easy philodendron to have the Paraiso Verde this one is my extremely bushy philodendron Giga uh, Gigantium 
blizzard variegated. And the reason for its bushiness is because in this part, the single stem has branched out to two plants. See, there's one plant here and another one here because I chopped off the top and I propagated it. So I gave off the propagated plant to, to a friend and now um, I now there is this bushy guy left for me. So it's, it's so a gigantic blizzard is essentially just a oversized marble queen. <laughs> yeah. Got this guy from um, Exotic Factory. I'm gonna put it back first. And behind I have a brandy atom, which is a bit neglected. Then above is my uh, begonia maculata. This is the begonia uh, white ice. Yep, which I've gotten from saw and pots. Still very tiny. As you can see, if you compare it to the Maculata, this guy is just like a tiny baby. Um, right beside the Maculata is just some um, Philodendron Burletai. Uh, this guy got sunburned recently. And this is the largest Burletai that I have. This one's a Mosera Dubia or Dubaya. So initially when I bought this guy, it was a huge single leaf. But just after two weeks the, the huge leaf turned yellow and just died off. And now it's shooting this runner and it's reverting back to this shingling form. So that's Mosera Dubaya. Hopefully I'll get hopefully the leaves get matured and then I could see a bit more fenestration at the top. This guy is also a Dubia. Uh, much more tinier as compared to this guy. This is a Stindeptus Truby, the dark form I think. Some more blue tie. And here is a Philodendron Florida Beauty. She's putting up quite a few nice leaves, but it's now giving me this kind of almost 80% yellow leaves right now, which is kind of scary. And I don't know what to do with it. Hopefully the variation goes back to normal. Um, this is a pot of neglected Mosera Borzigiana elbow. Um, this is Philodendron Cursifolium. Some P. datum at the back. And below the Cursifolium is my Anturium. VGI type. This is actually a hybrid VGI. It's not the pure VGI. This guy I got from a local collector and to my finding and I found that when I got a plant it has root rot. So luckily I managed to salvage it, salvage this guy and save it. Now it's uh, doing quite okay. This is the most recent new leaf. Uh, for the ground, Bob C. <laughs> and here is a Balaonum, Anturium Balaonum, which is not doing too great as well. This is Anturium Crystallinum. 
here I have a Anturium Insignia. Then this one's a Clarinodium Hybrid. And beside it is the Crystallinum. Some of you call it a Crystallinum Dark Form. Above it is uh, another Philodendron 69686. Then above it is my Pride and Joy. This is the Monstera Elbow Borzigiana. When I got this guy, um, it was only three leaves. It's this one, I think this leaf and this leaf and this one. So three leaves and it's been doing great ever since. And the most recent one is a half moon or yeah half moon leaf where you can see that 50% is green and another 50% is white. So here I have my Milano Chrysum. Uh, it's not doing too great as well. I've recently chopped off the tip of my Milano and propagated it. And then uh, this happened. Yeah. New, node, new growth points. One and two and three. So those are just potential growth points that will shoot up nice new leaf, hopefully. Uh, and then above, those are just some random anthuriums. This one's anthurium, uh, big bill. They grow quite massive when they mature. Anthurium big bill. Then this is Vitari for him. And then I've got a couple of Talansias hanging from this IKEA curtain rack. So I have quite a few zero replicas and uh, I think there's a Medusa. Disguise uh, a Tilensia curly sleeve. Uh, Over here is my Philodendron Gygas. And this one is supposedly a Mamei Silver Cloud. But the seller doesn't know the ID and neither do I. But I was just I was just told by my friend that it's a silver cloud because of the the huge patch of silver, silvery vein that you can see, it's much more dense and prominent as compared to a normal mummy, which is something like this. Yep. Okay, guys, that's the end of our little tour around my balcony, and I hope you guys enjoy this little tour. And if you guys like my content, um, please do not forget to like, share and subscribe. It would mean a lot to me and I'll continue to make more videos like this. So stay tuned and have a nice day. Thanks for watching, bye bye.